Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Everybody stand. <coughs> able to stand this morning. We're going to sing all the song when I pray. <laughs>
far as announcements, today is Mother's Day, so I do want to say Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there, the aunties, the godmothers, all the villages of women that came together to help you raise your children. Um, we need those villages back in this day and age. Yes, at this time, we live in with these kids. Um, but Happy Mother's Day to you guys. Pat on the back for, you know, Carrying children, delivering them, birthing them, raising them, bringing them out into the world, praying, you know, still praying for them, even when, you know, they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing and how you raise them. Because they need to pray for us and please continue to believe for us, your children, your grandchildren, if you have any great grandchildren or any of that, nieces, nephews. So thank you guys for that. Pretty good and his wife and 
but he wasn't able to make it. And so we just said thank you for those that are out. We see Sean out. So Edward, I guess, picking up her package. <laughs> and uh, I see. Brother Bob, I guess he's gonna, he gonna take up his wife back. It sound, sound like he want to do it, but we just need a little, a little something for thanking you. And just thank me for being mother, thanking you for raising and doing things, and being there for other children. Sometimes it's not your own children you're there for. Sometimes your grandchildren or other, your neighbor's children. But God is good. God is good to us and grateful. And uh, we right now we are still trying to figure out what's going on with the building. We haven't heard nothing from the landlord, <coughs> so we're still in the process. Maybe trying to find another building. So, like I say, I ask everybody at 12 o'clock to pray and fast about God giving us a building and the, and the growth of this church and everything put us in the right direction and uh, it's good to be in the house of the Lord and just be able to move around regardless of our aches and our pains uh, our short limit we still serve a God that cares for us and we reach out we might be aching in pain but that don't mean in our heart and our mind we can't be rejoicing and having a peace and that's what God's all about giving us peace and happiness. And uh, I see a young man that came in. Uh, you'd like to say something? No, I'm just glad to be here. Thank Amen. you very much. Okay. <laughs> I want to have people that come in because we don't want nobody to say, well, you know them folks, I want to know they so up, they wouldn't even say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hope you enjoy the service. Hope you come back and tell somebody back. about it and everything. And so with that, I'm going to pray and uh, do the offer and lift up the offering afterwards. While you're here for prayer. Oh, Father God, we come for Thanksgiving this morning, Father. We thank you for this Mother's Day. We thank you for all the mothers, whatever position they played as a mother to a neighbor, to their own to the grandchildren or the doctor or whatever. We thank you for them, Father. We thank you for this day, Father. We thank you for blessing us and enabling us to be able to come to church, Father, regardless of what's going on with our lives, Father. We ask you to look over over uh, Urania, Urania and the, with that war going on and things are happening around this world, Father, that we have no control, but you have control, Father. And we know you're able, Father. We, we come to you knowing that you know, we know you have a better place for us and another building for us, Father. And we want to be obedient to your word and your cause, Father. Help us do. Those are mothers and people that are on the street right now, homeless, Father. We ask you to smile on them. Those are in the jail, the incarcerated, penitentiary that are hospitals. We ask you to smile on them, Father, and bless them, Father. We're asking you to help us see our crooked ways and change and acknowledge you and become a better person, a better world, Father. Touch hearts and minds through the government, through the police department, to our servicemen and women. Father, we need you. We need you to not only protect us, but protect this world and make it a better world, Father. But we know there are things that have to come that's in your word and in your way. And we ask you for comfort in our heart and our mind, knowing that you're there for us, regardless of what we're going through or what's on our heart and our mind, Father. We ask you these blessings and all. In your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Oh, Father God, if we come at this time to lift this offering up to you, Father. We ask this offering be lifted to you and go and uh, what you have intended to, for it to do. Let us be able to outreach and do things and help people, Father, and help build your kingdom and acknowledge your caring and your love that you have showed on us, Father. We need you right now, Father. We're in a 
tonight, Father, not knowing where we're going to go or what we're going to do, but we know you got it all, Father, and we thank you because you own everything and, and about everything, Father. We just say thank you for who you are. We thank you for those who have been given. Thank you for those that gave in heart and mind that's in the church today, Father. Touch the heart and direction. We ask you these things and all things. In your son and Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. 
worship you, God, you are good all the time. All the time. Your mercy endures forever. Yes, it does. Regardless yes, it does. of what we want to think or what we want to believe, God's mercy endures forever. Regardless of what we're going through or what's happening, God's mercy endures forever. God is a true God, a righteous God, and an able God. And he will judge you accordingly to you judge yourself. See, sometimes we want to put things on God, but it's us. It's our choices that we make. Not what choices God made, but it's choices that we make in life that cause us a lot of problems. See, Great. like I say sometimes, uh, as a young man, you figure you can climb the mountain and do all kind of things. As an older man, you look at the mountain and say, I should have climbed the mountain. Great. <laughs> You know, a lot of times, uh, like I say, sometimes we 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 done did everything we wanted to do or thought we wanted to do and could do and couldn't do. Mm. And then we ask God, okay, take this junk and do something with it. Mm -hmm. See, when we having a good time and young and ready and can do anything and everything and leave mountains, we don't have time for God. <laughs> but when, when we start slowing down, we start looking, oh, there he is. He ain't been nowhere. That was you. What's somewhere? What an awesome God we are. Uh, and uh, if you're upset about your little Mother's Day presents, take it out on me. Everybody got the same thing. I have daughters, and, you know, and I'm coming up. Daddy, you got such and such a this and that. So I got a, a frame of mind that, I, well, I get y'all up. Everybody get the same thing. You might get it at a different time, but you won't get the same thing. Same thing. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. What an awesome God. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so I put a lot of time and moving around and getting those things. I, I guess when me and my truck didn't put some mileage on for my <laughs> But uh, I appreciate you and, and I thank y'all for coming and supporting. Maybe we, we can start growing and bringing people in and we're praying that God will bless us with the growth of this church, bless us with a new church, a better church, and just where well, we can help each other. Because regardless, what the song say? We are all family, and the God in us should show. We need to care about each other, encourage, and be uplifting and praising the Lord. We need to praise the Lord because He's worthy. He's worthy, I tell you. Yes, he is. If you believe in Him, He's worthy. Yes, He is. If you know Him, you can trust Him. If you know him, you can believe him because he's worthy. Amen. If you would, uh, stand up for the reading of the word. If you don't have your Bibles or anything with you, we have uh, our scriptures will be the same scriptures within our program uh, that we go by. The title of the sermon and everything you find is in the program and also the scriptures. If, if you if you feel better sitting down, you can sit down. Don't, don't, don't hurt yourself. We, we are all right. Okay. You know. But uh, it goes as done. Now Deborah, a prophet, the wife of Lipton, was leading Israel at the time. She held court under the palm of Deborah between Rabba and Bethel in the hill country of Israel. And the Israelites went up to her to have their dispute decided. She, she sent for Barak, a son of Abelon, from Kish, 
into Naphtal and said to him, The Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, Go, take with you 10,000 men of Naphtal and Zippah, and lead them up to Mount Tabor. I will lead Sarah, the commander of the Jephthah army, with his chariots and his troops to the Kishon River and give him into your hand. Barak said to her, If you go with me, I will go. But if you don't go with me, I won't go. Certainly I will go with you, said Deborah, but because of the course you are taking, the honor will not be yours, for the Lord will deliver Sarah into the hand of a woman. So Deborah went up with Barak to catch their Barak, summoned Zippah and Naphtal, and the thousand men went up under his command. Deborah also went up with him. If you would, uh, I like to use a thought. Mother of Israel serving on God's word, Deborah. Mother of Israel serving on God's word, Deborah. You can have a seat. First, a little thought. Deborah was a judge and she also was a prophet. Deborah was one of two people that was ever a judge and a prophet. A, a prophet. That was her and Samuel. Deborah governed a country in a time where there were no kings in this country. They had judges. She was one of the 12 judges in this country. A judge was one that was over the country and lead the country in the war, judge on what the country should do or how they should act. And also she was a prophet. She was foreseeing and talking to the Lord and the Lord was giving them a wisdom and a thought of how they would do things or what to do. Now, that's an interesting thing. Now, this woman was one of 12 judges. And uh, you say, today people say, well, women don't supposed to prophesy, women don't supposed to preach. But she was doing them both. She was prophesying, she was preaching, and leading the country. God does what he wants to do. God makes available who he wants to make available. So we need to sometimes leave God alone with his business and accept it and if anything, encourage the person, help the person and make sure that that person is following after the Lord because a lot of people jump up and say they this and that and don't know the Lord. A lot of people are run and tell you, God told me this, God told me that. Well, sometimes God, God can talk to it for himself and tell you what he wants you to do. <laughs> and sometimes we are, then there are sometimes when some people bring these things to you, God is giving you a confirmation because he's already told you what he wants you to do. But then there's sometimes people want to think they got more, I guess, uh, authority with God than you do. I can go to God and this and that. Well, you can go to God for this and that. Jesus made that clear over 2,000 years ago on the cross. But as we look at this Deborah, Mother of Israel. Deborah didn't have, the Bible don't show Deborah having any biological kids. She, she was married. Right here, tell you, the wife of Lippima, which was, in essence, Barak. See, the, the general 
that she sent for was her husband. The general that she sent for, that she was leading him and telling him what God had told her to, to tell him to do. Sometimes we as men need to stop and think. God could tell your wife or your girlfriend something to tell you, but you got to be prayerful enough to know it's right. You know, sometimes uh, that woman might tell you, God told you to give him a couple hundred dollars, and you ain't got a couple hundred dollars. So you got to understand sometimes. You know, they, 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 they might slip one on you. <laughs> but you, but you gotta realize, ah, uh, are they a child of the Lord? They won't do that. I don't think. <laughs> but, but you know, she prophesied and was a judge. One of one woman out of twelve other judges, all were men. God must have did something because how that should have been an embarrassment to them, the Jewish people. Why you letting a woman lead you and everything? But sometimes God had to do things to wake you up. Yeah. Had to do things to get your attention. You know, when we running down the street or running all boasting and happy, and sometimes God had to slow you down to let you know that you're going in dangerous waters of tread things. You remember when the ass told him, the prophet, why do you want to beat up on me? I'm saving your life. If you go a little bit farther, you see them angels who finna whoop your butt. <laughs> Sometimes there are people put in our lives to turn us in the right direction. Amen. Amen. See, people say, we make a full turnaround. If you make a full turnaround, you back to where you're at. Right. You go 359, not 360. Because yeah. you got that other degree to stop and look. Oh, I would have been there, but God put me here. Mm -hmm. But when, when we look at Deborah leading the army, she told him, Go get 10,000 men. And when he and, and God gonna send this old boy over after you, and he gonna trap y'all up. You gonna trap him up. And, but she didn't know, uh, they didn't know God had another 30,000 men in the loop waiting to come and help you. God will help you out when you think you're down and short. Yes, God is. will help you out when you think you're going the wrong way. Yes, God will yes. show you what you need to know when you're letting. Yes. Yes. When you quit trying to do it your way, I have it my way. Like we say, just a Burger King way, you can have it my way. <laughs> when you want to go in there, order, you order what you want to order, but God, Sometimes I tell you, you can order what you want to order, but that don't mean you're going to get it. Amen. <laughs> yes. Yes. Sometimes we have too much our way. <laughs> and that can mess us up. Yes. Sometimes we, we were ahead of God. God might have something for us, but we want to get ahead of God. Ask Abraham and Sarah. They got a head of God. Sometimes we need to slow down. What they say, hold your horse, slow down. And let God show you what he got for you. He took this woman and showed them a slow down and showed them what he had for them and the victory that he had. Because her husband, Barack, said, I ain't going to go if you don't go. And she, and she told him, well, if I go, I will get credit. And she tried to tell him, 
Go ahead. But he was so scared, she said, okay, I'll go. And she got credit. Uh -huh. I mean, it's just like sometimes uh, people don't want to go to church, or sometimes people want to do something. Uh, sometimes, you know, I, I see a lot of women dress their husbands uh -huh. and come to church. Yes. And, and, the, and the man said, I don't want, well, I got this suit in here for you. You, <laughs> you, you don't have to worry. I'll fix you up. <laughs> Well, I ain't, oh, baby, I put that money in that jar with her for, for we can pay our time. So you ain't got no reason for not coming. See, a mother knows how to run things. Sometimes she don't have to be all, oh, well, you're going to do this, you're going to do that. She know how to do things. I, I, I remember one time I was working at the hotel and this woman was talking to me and she was telling me, you know, I, I, I have a problem with my husband getting up for breakfast and doing this and doing that and different things. I said, you know what to do? Just leave it there. Leave his clothes, leave his food. But see, sometimes you can't take a man and try to push him. You got to Easy on that. You gotta set it down and don't say nothing to him and walk away. Sooner or later, he gonna look over there. Ain't nobody looking. He gonna go and do what he asked to do. But when you when you tell him to do something, oh, you can't tell me nothing. <laughs> so you, you see, Deborah told him what was gonna happen, but. He ended up doing what Deborah told him to do. He ended up, they had his men and Deborah got the victory. But then Deborah got the song that they sang about Deborah. You know, but life is strange. Sometimes we want to put our chest out and everything. And like they say, when you sleep, a woman is thinking. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes we think we can out a woman. A woman already got to figure it out when you're trying to figure it out. Yeah. But, but uh, before I get any further, uh, Deborah Snipes had a song called Out of God's Word. The song said, Every day I am serving on God's word. Are you serving on God's word every day? Are you serving out of God's word? Other words, are you doing what God wants you to do? Are you able to stand on God's word and be delivered and help someone else be delivered? See, Deborah helped a whole nation to be delivered. Deborah didn't have no children, but she was the mother of a nation. And a lot of time, you know, you have children, you have their, their friends, their, your cousin, your aunt, everybody want to be you around you. Sometimes they call you Big Mama or Big Amy. Yeah. I like to go to Big Mama or Big Amy's house. You know, my, my grandson, he stayed with me and his mama. And a lot of times he said, I want to go over to my auntie's house. And he don't know, I'll be ready for him to go. <laughs> Give me peace. <laughs> but uh, God bless women. God bless a mother. And so, see, why did God choose Deborah? They needed someone to inspire him. See, a woman, a mother can inspire you. When everybody else putting you down, that mother's there for you. That mother's lifting you up. That mother telling you what, what they're trying to get you, but helping you do it. It said, and the Lord chose Deborah. If she had not been 
obedient to the act of what the Lord told her to do, nothing would have changed. She used the place of truth and authority she had been given as a judge to inspire Barak to rise up an army and worship the Lord. Deborah was a worshiping warrior. How many worshiping warrior mothers are in your life? How many mothers have prayed you out of something and you didn't even know what was going on? Oh, amen. How many grandma's prayers that you heard about? How many mother's prayers that you heard about? How many devils in your family? Mm -hmm. Why was devil a prophet? At the time, there was a righteous and encouraged prophet named Deborah who was made a judge of all Israel because of her her faith, her wisdom, her fairness, and her obedience to the Lord. She was deeply concerned over the ill treatment of the people who were suffering at the hands of their Canaanite enemy. See, a lot of times a, a, a mother is more gentle than a father. A mother seems to just attract certain things about a child. See, like if you, like you got a, 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 a son and a, he get hurt, daddy gonna say, ah, you be all right, get on back out there. The mother said, come in, let me kiss you. <laughs> and how many kids run to their mom, and as soon as they kiss you, Oh, it looks like a, 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 a everybody got the energy. Just everything just go. Woo! And that daddy say, that's my boy. <laughs> you know, sometimes the thing that we go through are happening in our life. What did Deborah accomplish? Deborah served as a wise judge, obeying obeying God's command. And in time of crisis, she trusted Jehovah and took steps to defeat King Jabba, Israel's oppressor. She took steps. God had gave her the wisdom, the knowledge of how to do some things, how to suckle this man in. Yeah. You know, that ain't the first time a woman has suckled a man in. They do it all the time. <laughs> Sometimes. That man really think he's doing something uh, uh, outsmart that woman. That woman already got to figure it out. <laughs> I, I, I used to tell folks, a lot of fellas when I was out, I didn't do a whole lot of out, but when I was out, and you had the old boys say that player, player, they were players. I said, man, don't you know, before you walk up to that woman, that woman, then I already decided she wanted to be with you already that night. Yeah. From where you look or where you at. But sometimes a woman sit there and eye you, and they talk about how men eye a woman. No women sit back and eye, and she know who she want to be with, who she going to take on. <laughs> <laughs> but Deborah was smart. God gave her obedience enough to do and enough to handle her husband to handle a nation and judge them fairly. Then, then it said, what is the moral of this uh, story of Deborah? Deborah in the Bible doesn't question God's voice or wonder what others will say or uh, think she simply has the faith to do. What God tells her, whether people follow or not, is not her concern. Her only concern is doing what the Lord has called her to do right. and not let anything else get in the way. Right. How many mothers in church are doing what God tells them to do and not letting anyone? I, I, I listen to mothers and, and wives say, they them, how you going down there to see that old preacher? You going down there to give up your money? You going, but God said, go ahead. I will get out. Keep going. And one day, that old boy, he come down, and he said, well, let me go see what's going on with her and the preacher. 
and find out ain't no harm in the preacher, it's her and God. Yeah. And then yeah. he found out, huh, God can make all that happen. I better give me a piece of the rock too. Uh -huh. You know, sometimes it takes a woman, a good woman, a good obedient woman to lead a man into something good. You know, it takes a woman sometimes to help a man change from being a drunk to being somebody. A woman can tell somebody about God that don't know God. But a, a man can encourage her and help her if he know how to be a family man. It ain't all about I'm the boss of this house. It's about doing right in this house. You standing up, I, I have control. I'm the man of the house. But how many people nowadays, you got me and housewife, me and watching TV, drinking, and doing things, but they're the man of the house. But mothers know how to outsmart. smart. They know how to, when time to go, they know how to go. Deborah know how to go and get you out of situation of pain that was going on. But I'm moving on. I'm going to say a few things. Deborah had faith. She had faith, trust, and belief in the Lord. That, and she did what he had asked her to do and told her to do, be obedient. That things will be all right. They said, that, like the old word is, Things will be all right in the morning when the morning comes. There were no, there was morning a blessing coming. Do you know there are mornings a blessing coming when you're down sometimes and you think you can't go no further? You have to call on God. You have to believe in Him. He sent His Son down here to open up a door, to open up a phone line that you can call Him for yourself. Call him on the line for yourself. That is never been hung up a busy line or party line. But God is always there on the high. You need to know how to kind of wait on him and see what he gonna bring and not what you bring. Then Deborah had wisdom. She was smart enough to know that if I talk to the Lord. If I wait on him, if I believe on him, if I trust him, things can change to protect the innocent. Things can change to help when I use the Lord and ask him to guide my steps. Ask him to put the right things on my mind. Ask him what I need to have and don't need to have. Ask him to show me how to get out or get into something that he would get the blessing out of. See, we, number one thing we need to see is how will God fare in what we do? How will he get the credit for what we do? We always hot about what we do, but we can't do nothing unless God let us do it. Satan can't even come into our lives unless God allow us to ask Job. You know, sometimes we invite Satan in because Satan can decorate a picture and make it look so good on the outside. But what is it is in the inside or on the other side? We allow Satan with his trickery to do things to us in our mind. But if we stand on God's word, if we have faith and belief and trust in God, it'll be all right when the morning comes. It'll be all right. Then, her fairness. You know, she, she treated everybody the same. See, just like your pastor, he gave everybody mother the same man, the <laughs> same balloon. He was fair. <laughs> See, we got to treat everybody like, see, like I tell people, 
You got to treat people like you want to be treated. Amen. Amen. You know, you ain't no big I, little you. You got to know that people have feelings just like you have feelings. Some have too much feeling though. But anyway, we got to know how to deal with what other folks say, you know. You got to be kind and mindful what you say and what you do. You got to know sometimes when a person is doing their best or trying to do their best, they encourage you. You got to know two words, thank you and you're welcome. Thank you and you're welcome will get you a long way. If you know how to use time, know how to do. Then it said she was obedient to the Lord. Are you being obedient to the Lord? Do you love God first? Do you put him above all other things? Do you talk to him and let him know? Because if you put him first, Regardless of what you're going through, or regardless of what the situation looks like, God don't do nothing wrong, but everything comes out good. Sometimes we get out of our box, out of our safety zone, but if God is doing it, it's going to be good. If God is setting you up for a blessing, it's going to be good. See, we listen to other folks. It said, Deborah didn't listen to other folk. She used God's wisdom. She used God's yeah. word to stand on. We need to stand on God's word. We need to quit worrying about what other people got to say about us or going to do about us. Because God got it. God can make your enemy be the one that feeds you. God can make those that talk about you be the one to look at you and say, oh, how God is, how gracious. Ask Joseph. Them three boys that talked about him and said he had a problem with God was the one that God used to bless him out of his situation. God can take the worst person in your life and, and have them build you up. If you be obedient. If you know if you be fair, if you ask for wisdom, if you ask for faith. See, I was reading the other day, sometimes we ask for certain things. We ask for faith, but God might put a little mixture in there to see how much we really want faith. Are we really the sacrifice to get faith? He might ask for wisdom. He might show us some things that we don't, don't think it's right or this or that, but if it was God telling us, if what we want it, if we ask him for these things, we need to learn how to trust in God. See, we go through trials and tribulations and circumstances sometimes because we haven't asked for it. Does God let us go through these things to give us that wisdom, that faith, that trust, that obedience? Because we ask. He want to know, can we really sacrifice for what we ask for? We ask for things and then we thank God just for to bring us to a silver platter. We don't supposed to go through nothing. What the song says, have you been tried by the fire? If you haven't been tried by the fire, you don't know. Sometimes you can look at other folks and learn something. But sometimes when you been hit, when something hit your household, uh -huh, then you got a testimony. Uh -huh. Then you know what God has done for you. Uh -huh. You see what God do for some people, but you got to know, have you been through the fire? God has brought you through. And you know what? In the background, there's a mother praying for you. There's a grandmother praying for you. Yes. And you've been tried by the Bible. Mother of Israel serving on God's word. Deborah. Are you serving on God's word? 
Are you truly serving on God? Are you trying to make an effort to do what God tells you to do? You're going to fall, you're going to stumble, but if you get up and look up to God, He's going to straighten you up. He's going to give you strength. He's going to let you know that, yeah, you fall sometimes, but you get up. Now, for instance, you look, take a child when he starts stepping and he falls, but he gets back up. He might cry, but he gets back up. He might get a sore or uh, hurt, but he gets back up. And we all children of God. It ain't meant to be smooth all the time. But sometimes we can ask God why. He'll tell you something about that. Have you examined the things you do, or how you do, or how much trust, or how much faith, how much belief, when you really start asking God and leaning on God, and you start seeing the things I used to do, I do no more. The way I used to act, I do no more. Have you start standing on God's word? Have you start knowing that God is there for you? Have you have belief regardless of what you think? See, you got a peace of mind. You got happiness and joy. This old body, we ain't going to be housed in it for long. But do we look at God? Do it all. Do we see God? Do it all. Like I tell people sometimes, when you're around people, sometimes right before they die, they say, don't worry about me. I know the Lord. He got this. And while we're living, we should say, don't worry about me. I know the Lord. Do you stand on his word? Are you like that one? Are you being fair to everybody? Are you praising the Lord? Are you worshiping the Lord? Stand on God's word. Stand on the word of the Lord. Be a father, a mother to someone and let them know what you know about God. Help them if you can, if you would, if you try. Don't give up because, see, God haven't gave up on you until you die. See, people ask you, Pastor, come, come, can you come pray for my <coughs> You see husband, child, uh, a wife. It's over with. When that last breath, it's over with. You can't put them nowhere. You can try to encourage them, try to help them beforehand, but that last breath, it's over. This destination is itself. Right. Hell or heaven is itself on that last breath. Yeah. And don't let nobody know, lie and tell you, well, I can, you can, you got only people who can get you in heaven is yourself. Every pot got its own body. And if you want to be a pot on the right bottom, you better. Go to work for Jesus Christ and put him in your heart and your mind. Let him know that you want to change. Let him know that you want to do some things. It might have taken 99 years, but he's still there. What did he tell you? I give you the same as a hired in the morning as a hired in the late hours. Salvation. Let Jesus take your own over. The other side. The doors of the church are open. The doors of the church are open. Do you know him? Do you care? Do you care to know him? Do you care to be someone that people can look up to you and say, you know, brother or sister so and so was the one that caused me to make a change in my life. God is working in each and everybody's life to help not just you, but help others around you to come. We're all recruiters. We're all ministers in this army. We need to get to know them. We need to get to love them. We need to talk about them and share them. You can't take God and 
put it in those paper sack bag and say, well, this is my God. God is our God. When you sign me up, sign me up. Let me sign up into the army of Jesus Christ. Going to the church over, there's three ways to come. By letter, Christian or spirit, or can they come out to it? Will you get the norm? Would you accept the son? He said, when he died on earth, he died in heaven. He dealt with it. He's got his arms all out and said, come on, come on. When everybody else didn't refuse you, I'm here for you. When everybody else didn't turn their back on you, I'm here for you. When everybody else didn't talk about you, I'm here for you. When everybody else didn't put their business in the street, I'm still here. And I ain't gonna talk about you. I ain't gonna put your business in the street. Help. And it don't cost you nothing. But the time of being obedient and getting to know. The doors of the church are open. The doors of the church are open. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. His mercy endures forever. Eternal Father, we come this day with that giving in our hearts. We thank you for this Mother's Day. We thank you for all the mothers, living and unliving. We thank you for how you have shaped us and ask you to continue to let us grow in your faith and your mercy. Give us a blessing and the, the heart and the mind to encourage and bring people to you and talk about you and do the thing. When we talked about the five crowns this week, we talked about how we get the kind of righteousness about encouraging and helping others to know you and helping others be introduced to you and bring it to us, Father. And we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. But Father, we ask you to bless us. Oh, in the sound of my voice, bless us, Father, that we get to our homes, our jobs, or whatever we need to do. Father, touch our heart. Let us be able to touch someone this week and tell somebody how good you are, regardless of what we're going through or how we feel or how we think we feel, Father. Let us be able to talk about you more so. Let us be able to just know that you're God, a forgiving God, an understanding God. We thank you for all that you're doing and you're going through, Father. And let us be able to see each other next week or be able to be uplifting. Help us, Father. I pray for those that are going through sickness, pain, or hurt, that you give them peace of mind and let them know that you're above all pain, hurt, and anything that can go wrong, Father. We ask you these things and all things. In your son's name, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Let's see if we're having a good quarter here. We finally got more than they do.